Hey guys, Rick Dunham here with Holy Moly Outdoors. Following up on our last video of how to make a dropper jig, today we're going to go into the rigging of dropper jig fishing. I have a couple great jigs here, some of the ones you just saw me tie up, and some heads that are also ready for a little bit of application as well for tying. We have some other more traditional style dropper jigs that I can show you how to rig up, and then we break down into the actual other options for droppers from hard beads to soft beads where I cover a little bit of scent hooks to be using and what I like to run for leaders so let's get started and looking at some dropper jig fishing so as we talked about dropper jigs are a very effective way to target steelhead in multiple columns of the water you can run a jig 8th ounce to 16th ounce that will run anywhere between a foot to maybe two feet of water above the bottom. You can then run your dropper about 18 inches, 14 inches. It's all preference based on where you want your presentation to lie. You can range from anywhere from a soft bead like these great ones from X Factor Tackle or you could go to something more like a hard bead like these from Glow Ballers. Either way, there are options that will make a great presentation and you can even forego the bead altogether and just fish bait. A lot of guys will put a small tuft of yarn into the egg loop there and run sand shrimp or eggs with it. You can really do whatever you want in your imagination with this type of fishing. So, Let's first then take a step back. We already know what our jigs are going to look like. We have a lot of selections from sizes. Let's take even a step further back. Look at the droppers themselves. So, what I like to do is dependent on the water that I'm fishing, I will run anywhere, like I said, between a 12 inch to about an 18 inch leader. That's generally what I'm going to be running with my dropper setups but I find myself somewhere between that 18 inch mark to be about the norm. Now as far as the presentation size of the uh, dropper itself that all depends on the water conditions. Low clear water we're going to go to small beads maybe a little tiny yarn ball, tuff of eggs, something tiny. As you get to the more normal flows, you can look at something more like an attractor pattern of a 12 millimeter or a 10 millimeter bead. Sometimes even a big glob of eggs on that bottom hook. You never know, the fish, best of the time, are going to tell you what they want. And that is beautiful. So really, you guys can try different things and see what happens. Now, as far as hooks go, I have found a couple brands that really perform well. Gamagatsu is a tried and true staple as well as owner and they have their different applications as such for these different types of hooks. Now I have found the finesse wide gaps to be a perfect bead hook. They're a light wire and with that wide gap you get more penetration on your hook sets so it really becomes an important factor. I really like these mosquito hooks as well from owner because they really have a straight eye and a sticky sharp hook. So either one of these brands are in my book as some of the better bead hooks. Gamagatsu also makes a drop shot hook that is more intended for the kokanee fisherman but I have found this one to be effective as well if you're using it for bead fishing. But like I said more using that finesse wide gap hook I have gone to using this less and using the other more. Now we're going to leader. I personally like running fluorocarbon when I need to um, but 8 pound test to 10 pound test on your dropper is going to be about where you want to be. Normally I fish 8 because a lot of the times my leader coming off my float is 10 pound. So you want to stagger it just a little bit less that way if you hang up the bead or your dropper you won't break off your whole rig. So I usually run the Seaguar Red Label. It's a good line. I haven't had any problems with it. And it doesn't cost a lot. So you get a quality line and it's fluorocarbon which can help if you have low clear water. 
we then look at scent. Now you can go and use an oil based scent on a bead and it works or you can do a gel paste scent and that will also work. But for bead fishing and dropper fishing for as long as I've started to do this now I have come across the most effective by far rig method for scenting up and that is the AN Sporting scent sticks. These are like a chapstick type scent and you can apply easily to a hard bait bead or even a soft bead and this stuff will stay on as long as you fish it. It does not roll off on the first cast it stays on your rig well and I usually reapply about every 15 casts just to make sure I have a good scent trail going and the even better part about these scent sticks is well yes you can always scent a bead with anything but a lot of the times when you try and scent a jig you run into problems because that scent gets into the material and it messes up the fur marabou in particular these scent sticks all you do rub it on the jig head and you have a scented jig and a scented dropper and frankly you can stagger up different scents changing it up between the two a lot of possibilities Jared at AN Sporting has some great scents for your winter steelhead needs from sand shrimp all the way to krill and even garlic go visit them and check them out on their website to see more about those scent sticks now when we actually start talking about the droppers themselves two things come to mind. Everybody knows bead fishing is a very effective way of fishing steelhead and trout in particular because they love salmon eggs. Now in this time of year we have fish feeding on those deposited salmon eggs in the river systems and a hard bead can just be the absolute perfect imitation and I recently got some of these glow ballers from Mike Garrison and I cannot wait to try them out the colors are fantastic and just a really great looking product really excited to try those on my droppers for this winter's steelhead season but there's also something on the market that has become the last year and a half and that is soft beads and uh, while there are a lot of competition brands out there I personally love the ones that Jeff has at X Factor Tackle these are infused with scent and because of that you don't need to worry about running a bunch of scent elsewhere you can just pull them out of the package they're already scented up and you're good to go Jeff has them in a few different sizes so we have 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12 and even 14 and the same thing with our beads that are hard over here you have 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter and that all size wise is dictated on the water conditions color as well low clear water you want to tone down to a more natural color presentation because those fish are going to be able to see that dropper longer now if we're sitting in a high colored or even steelhead green where you have a little bit of color something more bright and flashy like this pink or a bright orange something that will catch their eye really helps you out and while you're dropper fishing something I have come to find in my pegging of my dropper is using these rubber bobber stops and these are bow max and it really makes a big difference for your beads that are hard you can just throw the bobber stop on the line first then drop your bead down and then tie directly to your dropper swivel in this case now if you're fishing a soft bead I'd highly recommend you use one of the clear sequins now this is an 8 millimeter bead you could probably get away without the sequin or trim it down a little bit but I personally enjoy using the sequins because it really helps keep that bead from sliding through and you can effectively fish it and not have to move it so really makes a big difference and at the end of the day you have the ability there to make a quality presentation. So lastly I wanted to talk a little bit about these other style of dropper jigs. Now this is one of the commercially made 
jig heads out there where the eye is also a part of the jig head itself. So that dropper eye is molded in and it works great. I've caught a lot of fish using this method as well, tying straight off the bottom here with the same type of dropper setup and doing really well. So that is an option. Now another option is one of my homemade jigs, or any jig really. A lot of guys will tie their dropper jigs in right behind the head of the jig itself. Right where my tying thread is there is a perfect place to run that dropper straight off the hook shank. You can also then tie directly to the hook shank if you want as well. Some guys will do that. In this case, we have a 16th ounce small, call it a micro jig. If you tie it off the back of here, the presentation will look a little bit different in the water column as this jig goes through the water, that bead or dropper itself will be more trailing behind as opposed to vertically up and down. You can play around with it guys and figure out what the fish want the most but dropper fishing is so effective where you can do it and I highly recommend giving it a try for your winter steelhead season this, this year. So take a look at these great products guys if you have a chance for my floats I'm always running clear drifts it really makes a difference for me but guys, the fun is just getting out on the water and trying some new techniques. And I really hope that this helps you on the water for your winter steelhead season for 2016. Thanks for watching, guys. Rick Denham with Holy Moly Outdoors signing off. Take care and fish on. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. This is Rick Denham with Holy Moly Outdoors signing off. If you want to see some more of these videos, please subscribe to my channel. And take a look at the videos that are playing above. Lots more fishing action and instructional videos to come. Thanks for watching. Tight lines and good luck on the water. Fish on.